We're back with some more college basketball action here for Thursday, November 10th. And it's looking like Wednesday is going to be a profitable day. We got the cover with Maris. Monmouth doesn't show up, end up losing that one. So one and one at the moment. But Bellarmine is up at the half against Louisville. And it would take a monumental collapse at this point for them not to cover 12 and a half. So um, not calling it, but looking like a profitable day for Wednesday. And let's jump right into Thursday's card. Now to start out here on Thursday, we got Gardner Webb taking on Stephen F. Austin. Gardner Webb comes into this one as the 190th overall team in the Hides of Power Rankings. Stephen F. Austin is the 134th overall team. And for Gardner Webb, looked pretty good against Colorado State on opening night. They ultimately end up losing that game, but were able to keep it within two points. And they actually did a decent job shooting the ball in that game. Wasn't the best by any means, and certainly was their downfall towards the end. Um, but were able to stay in that, able to stay semi-competitive. The real reason they were able to do that, though, was their rebounding, especially on the defensive glass. They just did an insane job um, preventing Colorado State from rebounding the ball, pulling down 96.2% off the defensive glass. And through one game of the season, they're actually the number one team of the country um, in that category. But overall, Tim Kraft, as head coach, has built a, a decent team here for Gardner Webb over the past few seasons. It was a team that went 18 and 13 last season um, and finished second in the Big South um, with with Simo transfer DK Nichols coming in, dropping 10 points in that game. You know, he's one of those guys who I'm going to look at more as the season goes on. Um, but overall, a decent opening night for him, a decent opening night for this team. Um, even though you know their perimeter defense ultimately hurt them and that could certainly be a problem here against Stephen F. Austin. Stephen F. Austin also got the win um, opening night. It was against a, a non-D1 school, La Toronto. I don't know how to say that if you <laughs> go to that school. I'm sorry, but um, ultimately it's not a D1 school, so so we really don't care. doesn't mean anything for that game. They got the win and that's all that matters, but Kyle Keller you know, really has made a name for himself as Stephen F. Austin through his first seven seasons um, here as the head coach. I mean, last season went 22-10 and 10 and you know finished number one in regular season whack play for this team and my biggest concern for this team coming into the season with the loss of Gavin Nizzle um, you know they're their leading scorer from last season but despite the loss of him they do return a lot of talent from last season obviously losing your number one guys hard um, but they also hit the transfer portal very hard and overall it's a roster that has a lot of college basketball experience um, and, and it looked like they played well together and again not a not a d1 game but played well together in that opening night game and kicking off D1 play here, um, I think Stephen F. Austin is ready to come out with a bang, especially at home in this one. I think Gardner Webb is going to struggle to guard them on the perimeter, and overall, I think Gardner Webb is going to struggle on the road in this one. I love this Stephen F. Austin team taking them minus five and a half here against Gardner Webb. Now up next on the card, we head to the state of Illinois as Illinois State takes on Eastern Illinois. Illinois State comes into this one as the 211th team in the Hot Tibet Power Ranking. Eastern Illinois, the 358th overall team. And last year, that would have been dead last in the country, but they get five buffer spots um, behind them this season. But for Eastern Illinois, you know, really struggled opening night, granted, against Illinois how competitive did you really expect them to be? I mean, end up losing that game by 30, but it's hard to put a whole lot of weight into that matchup, even though it is a D1 team. Um, you know, it, not a whole lot you can really say about that game, if we're being quite honest. For Illinois State, though, head coach Mike Padilla looks to, you know, get his first win as the Illinois State head coach after taking over this season. Comes into this one following that three-point loss to Western Illinois in their opening night game. And overall, it's an Illinois State team that just did really not shoot the ball very well at all um, in that game. Their one saving grace, they did a decent job rebounding the ball. Um, and overall, their defense wasn't terrible in that game, but they definitely have to improve off of that one once they, they get into some of their harder opponents. I don't know that it's going to mean a whole lot in this one because it is an Illinois State team that is still very, very talented. Sure, they lost some guys from last year, but they hit the transfer portal very, very hard. One guy who I am very interested to watch this season, Elon transfer, Darius Burford, you know, is going to be interesting to watch throughout the entire season. Only had seven points in that opening nine game. Didn't have a ton of minutes, uh, but he's a guy I think they'll look to as the season progresses, um, as he gets some more minutes. And, and overall, it's just an Illinois State team that has a lot of college basketball experience. Even if the, the chemistry isn't necessarily completely there, not a ton of guys who have necessarily played with each other um, a, a whole lot coming into this season, but a lot of experience, you know, a lot of a grad transfers, a lot of seniors, a lot of fifth year guys with that COVID eligibility on this roster. I really think that experience is going to pay wonders, especially early here against an Eastern Illinois team that quite honestly 
isn't that great. I mean, Eastern Illinois lost their top two scorers from a season ago. And yeah, they, they might improve a little bit. They, they certainly aren't a terrible team. Actually, I take that back. They're kind of just a terrible team. Um, I mean, they won three games at Ohio Valley play last season. It's a weaker Ohio Valley, so they might do a little bit better this season. But I'm just not confident in this Eastern Illinois team. I don't have a lot of hope for them. I think they really struggle in this matchup at home. I think Illinois State goes on the road and gets a pretty massive win here. So I'm taking Illinois State minus nine and a half here against Eastern Illinois. Now, if you haven't already, before we get into this final pick, head over to hotdipbest.com. Take a look at the computer model picks up on the website. Got picks every day for college basketball, college football, the NFL, NBA, NHL, UFC. Of course, got horse racing picks being posted every day as well. So make sure you take a look at all of that and get picks for every game going on there from the Hot Tip Bets computer model, as well as follow the Hot Tip Bets main account at Hot Tip Bets on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter to stay up to date with all of those computer model picks. Also, follow my personal account at Hot Tip Bets Chris on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, so you don't miss out on any of the content that I am putting out, as well as follow me on BetStamp, where you can get early access to all of my picks and get a notification every single time I place a bet. And these last two days, we've had a spread move five points from the video um, to when the, the actual game took place. So make sure you're following over there so you can get notifications even before the video is posted on YouTube. That is right when I place it on the sports book, I also put it in there. So make sure you are following on BetStamp. And last but definitely not least for watching here on YouTube, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notification so you don't miss out on any future content and most importantly drop a comment down below let me know who you guys are betting on for thursday and let's get into this final game cal poly takes on san francisco here on thursday night cal poly comes into this one as the 278th overall team in the high tibet power ranking san francisco is the 59th overall team and you know for cal poly get a solid win over bethesda um in their opening night game but it's not a D1 school, not a whole lot of weight you can put in that one. And, and really, that's about all I have to say about that one. But for the San Francisco team, you know, um, they get the win over Texas Southern, which, yeah, isn't a crazy great win by any means. But it was a Texas Southern <laughs> Texas Southern team that did win the SWAC a season ago. And, you know, overall for San Francisco, the outlook on this team was not nearly as high um, from most places coming into the season as it was a year ago, especially, you know, in large part because they had a first year head coach. Um, Chris Grinchfieldson has, you know, taken over and has had a decent start to the season here. Overall, um, they shot the ball excellent in that game, especially from the perimeter. They were great from three, hitting 47.8% um, from beyond the arc. And, you know, really what that, that showed in that game, and yes, I get it, it wasn't a great opponent, but neither is Cal Poly, um, is that this team is still play. They still have plenty of talent. I mean, one guy we saw go off in that game, Washington State transfer Terrell Roberts, um, dropping seven points leading this San Francisco team in that game but it wasn't just him overall this team just did a great job spreading the ball around getting a lot of guys involved in this offense and it's a San Francisco team that I love and I really think it's a San Francisco team that is much closer to the tournament than they are away from it and, and I think they're going to be very very similar to what we saw last season for Cal Poly though it's just not a great team I mean John Smith has hopes going into this season you know his fourth year um it's really put up or shut up time for him though it's it's a team that just quite honestly hasn't been good um under him only won seven games last year only won two games in big west play but they do have one of the highest returning minutes in the conference which is certainly a plus for this cal poly team but overall I don't think there's a ton to love about this team. They finished bottom 20 in the country last year when it came to turnovers. Um, I will have to you know wait and see how that affects them this year. But while they have some talent, it just wasn't a team that played well together. It wasn't a team that ever really seemed to have chemistry. It was a lot of me players, a lot of a lot of guys trying to carry it um, and not really playing as a team. I think they see more sloppy basketball out of this Cal Poly team, and especially on the road at San Francisco here. I think they're going to be in for some massive, massive troubles. I'm taking San Francisco minus 13 and a half here against Cal Poly.